Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about Utah and the possibility that they leave the Big 12 before they even get in the Big 12 and find their way over to the ACC. That's obviously something we will continue to unpack as more information comes out on that. But let's talk about the most important coaches for all of the title contenders. Obviously, the head coach is massively important to these uh, program success, but I wanted to get into some play callers, possibly some even position coaches that I think are going to hold a huge key to what these teams can do in this upcoming year. And let's start, go ahead and jump right in and let's start with Charvarius Robinson at Georgia. He is someone that I'm watching incredibly closely because he is one of the most fascinating people in the business to me. I think he's going to be an absolutely massive riser in the next couple of years around college football and he found himself in a really good spot to do that, right? A lot of uh, remarkable coaches have come out of Georgia, Dan Lanning, the most recent, finding his way up to Oregon. And I see a very, very similar future for Charvarius Robinson. I think I would be very surprised if in five years he was not a head coach, to be totally honest with you. This guy has everything going for him you could possibly want, is an incredible recruiter, uh, creates relationships like no other, and I think he's going to be awesome. That's why, honestly... When he left after Saban's retirement, some people were not so happy around Tuscaloosa when Kalen DeBoer came into town. He offered him the D.C. job, but he decided to stay at UGA, decided to roll with that decision, and I think it's a good one. You know, I think when you look at this defensive staff at UGA, being able to learn from Kirby Smart, from Will Muschamp, even from Glenn Schumann, who's been doing this for a couple of years now, is a huge benefit to this guy's future, but also it's a huge benefit to Georgia. When you look at this team, they're are definitely some questions on the defensive side of the ball. Not necessarily huge questions as you have with some other teams around the country, but when you look at the interior defensive line, it's not necessarily a Georgia interior de defensive line, as we've kind of um, seen in the past at least. But also, when you look at the back end, it's not nearly as strong as it used to be, and that's where Traverius Robinson really, really does his work. He did an incredible job at uh, Bama for a number of years working with the DBs, and I think when he comes over here, he's just going to have incredible, incredible ability to create the best situation because there's a ton of younger players that are going to have to make plays for UGA this upcoming season. When you talk about, da <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize. When you talk about Daniel Harris on the outside, when you talk about Ellis Robinson on the outside, KJ Bolden, uh, Janela Guerrero, all of these guys are a little bit younger, a little bit uh, lower on the experience meter as uh, you would have liked at Georgia. But when you have someone like Traverius Robinson in that building, it makes things a lot easier. Now, I could have gone Trey Scott, the defensive line coach as well. He's going to be hugely important to what they do. And if Kirby Smart got that higher right, if they got Traverius Robinson right in particular, they're going to be on a 2022 level. If they can uh, guard and possibly be opportunistic on defense, create some picks, create some problems, which with Malachi Starks back there, you're going to create some problems for defenses or for offenses, excuse me. Um, I think they're going to be an elite defense, and I think this guy is going to have as much to say about that as really anyone in the building. So fascinated to watch him. I think he's going to be incredible these next cu couple of years and will be hugely important for Georgia being who they need to be this upcoming year. Um, but let's move over to Texas and let's talk about Pete Kwiatkowski because this is a guy that I think a lot of Texas fans are – I don't want to say conflicted about because he's been fantastic. The defense has improved every single season he's been there. But also a couple uh, last year, there have been a couple of times where it didn't quite go the way you wanted it to, right? The end of that Oklahoma game is probably the biggest example of where it just felt like the style of play or the, the way they were approaching that last drive was not necessarily the best way to do it. And you're playing off coverage and you're doing some things that lend itself to a guy like Dylan Gabriel tearing you up and, and going for a game-winning drive. So I think there is worry there. I think there is a, a, a couple of questions. Now they have dudes all over the field. They have very few holes when you talk about um, this defense. They did a great job of filling some of the holes that they possibly could have had on interior defensive line and corner with some transfers they brought in. But Ian Boyd over at Inside Texas, who is one of the smartest football minds that I have come across, is someone that Definitely breaks down the game in a really, really remarkable way, but he was talking about the biggest question mark for Texas, and he didn't single out a position group. He didn't say it was someone in particular or some position in particular. He just said the marrying of these three position groups on the defense is going to be a huge, huge thing, right? You're going to have to have not only the D-line play well, not only the linebackers not play well, not only the back end play well, 
all of them have to play well and all of them have to play together. Uh, the SEC, as we all know, everyone has players. Everyone has dudes pretty much across their entire lineup, across their entire defense. They have guys that can play really high-level football. If you can't get 11 guys that play with essentially one brain and essentially are on the same page at all times and it fits together like perfect puzzle pieces, you're going to have problems. The SEC is a totally different game than the Big 12 where you can't just make a couple of plays a game and hope that you're going to win a game. You have to be dominant. You have to have a, be a force at every single level of that defense. So Pete Kwiatkowski is the guy that is definitely going to make all of this work. I'm not worried about the offense, frankly, because when you have a third-year quarterback coming back, when you have all the weapons they have on offense, you're rarely going to be worried about offense up in um, in Austin. But Pete Kwiatkowski is definitely up for a very, very big year, and if he can put it together and get a top 15, 20 defense in the country, Texas can do everything that they want to do, win a title, do all the stuff that has been eluding them for quite some time, but that's going to be the guy that really, really um, holds that in his hands, kind of. But let's move over to Alabama, and let's talk about Maurice Lindquist. This is a very fascinating guy, came over from Buffalo. He was the head coach at Buffalo and didn't necessarily have the greatest record there, but did some really good things while he was there and definitely is someone that works incredibly well with DBs. He's someone that I think is going to be fascinating to watch. Now, this one was a little bit hard because there's so many new people in the building, because there's so many different moving parts. A lot of people are important for Alabama this upcoming year, but when you look at one position that you're worried the most about, I think, for Bama fans and everyone around the country when you talk about Bama, it's the back end, right? You're going to have to have some young players step up into big-time roles. Jalen and uh Zabian Brown, both those guys are likely going to have to play big-time snaps, and they're not going to be able to you know, slack off on those snaps by any means. If they mess up, then the team could be hurt in a lot of different ways. I made a prediction earlier in the season or really an overreaction from spring saying this back end could cost them a couple of games. Well, Maurice Lindquist would be the person to kind of offset that, right? So I think it's going to be fascinating to watch. He's done an incredible job with a number of DBs in the past. Devin Brown, we've talked about a couple of times on here, was at Buffalo a year ago before moving over to Syracuse. He left pretty much because Maurice Lindquist left. And I don't know if he got any offers from Bama. He's a little bit... um, he might be a little bit below what Bama was looking for, but the reality is a very, very talented Devin Grant, excuse me, not Devin Brown, um, but Devin Grant is a, fa- a very fantastic player, and Maurice Lindquist is a huge reason for that. So really, the way I look at the Bama defense, they're not going to suffer if the pass defense is good. If the pass defense is good, they'll be one of the best in the country. They'll have the ability to do everything they want to do this season. If it's bad, then the defense could be really bad, and there could be a ton of issues that, especially when you're playing Georgia and you're playing Ole Miss and LSU and all of these teams that can throw the ball all over the field, you're going to have some problems. Uh, so I think that Wisconsin game is going to be fascinating because you have a passing offense. You have some aggression going at your corners a little bit, so we'll see how they kind of react to that. But let's move over to Ohio State and let's talk about Chip Kelly because he is, in my opinion, the most important coach that is not a head coach this upcoming year. I I think he holds the key to whatever Ohio State's going to be. If he can unlock this offense the way that they absolutely can be with all of the talent they have all over the field, they're going to win the national title. Uh, I'll say that with my chest. I feel very, very confident in that. I think he's someone that totally changed the complexion of this team. Now, obviously, there's still questions of how well does it all work? Does Will Howard, is Will Howard the quarterback that you need him to be? Now, I tend to believe he's going to be, but Chip Kelly is going to be the one that really, really makes the big leap there. Obviously, Ryan Day giving up play calling duties there is, I think, a big time step. Uh, Most schools do not necessarily win a championship with their head coach calling plays. Now, there are a couple of people that I think have the ability to do that, but it felt like Ryan Day was letting a lot of other stuff get on top of him and focusing a little bit too much, maybe, on uh, some of the different intricacies of play calling and obviously it's hard to focus on all of that um, when you have a million different things going around so I love this hire I love the personnel that they have to go with this hire I think they're going to use a lot of two running back sets with Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson and just absolutely tear teams to pieces but if Chip Kelly can't get that offense going then you have a couple more questions for sure about this Ohio State team and then finally we got Tony Tuiti I think this is a guy that 
probably doesn't get the love that he deserves, frankly. Uh, he has a very, very good def uh, defensive line in front of him. He's definitely someone that is going to play a huge part in that. And Oregon did a great job of addressing kind of the worry in that interior defensive line. Adding Jamari Caldwell, adding Derek Harmon is huge. It's one of the best duos in the entire country. Definitely going to be fascinating to watch them. And also, but the reality is when you look at the Big Ten today, you can't just have those two guys, right? You, you can't just have the top line be really good and then not be able to rotate guys in because if you're playing interior defensive line, you're going to need guys to rotate in. That's just the reality of the position. And you have to be able to go two or three deep at that position to compete at the Big Ten and the national level the way that Oregon wants to. So this guy is going to be hugely important, not only for the development of Jamari Caldwell and Derek Harmon, but also the second string guys, the third string guys, the guys that really are going to make you a championship team. Obviously, everyone has top line guys that can play, especially when you're competing for a national title. The ones that really win it are the ones that can go two, three, maybe even four deep and still be a team to be reckoned with. And that's what Oregon's trying to kind of break the door down of. And I think this is a guy that absolutely will have the most uh, to kind of say about that. Obviously, we saw how this can kind of transform a college football season. We saw Bo Davis do it a year ago at Texas. If they don't have Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy, that's a very different team a year ago. And if Oregon can get 75% of what Texas got a year ago from those two guys, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I think it's going to be fascinating to watch this team kind of just unfold before our eyes. But it'll be fascinating to watch all of this. I think it's something that when you look at all of these coaches, obviously, you know, the play callers are going to have the biggest effect on a team. But I kind of wanted to get a couple of position coaches in there. I wanted to make sure that we highlighted some of the guys that are going to be super important for this team. We'll do that that for players as well down the road because there are a couple of players that are not necessarily getting the love on these teams that they probably should. But we're going to take our final break here and then we're going to do a little bit of a speed run through the top 10 Tuesday of the teams under the most pressure heading into 2024. We have tons of teams that have a lot riding on 2024, tons of teams that have pushed their chips to the center of the table and we'll definitely be able to unpack what all those teams have this upcoming year and what the pressure looks like for those teams. So definitely stick with us, and we'll be right back with that. 